Praise God. Let's open up our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. And we look at our foundation scripture. Praise God for evermore for this particular series. Hebrews chapter 10. And let's look at verse, well, look at verse 22. Because the Bible tells us, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Now, notice it says full assurance of faith. What do you mean by full assurance of faith? It means to be fully persuaded. To be fully persuaded that what God has said, God will perform. And this is where we must put confidence in what God has said in his word. And when a person is fully persuaded, there is no room for doubt and unbelief. Doubt and unbelief are evil spirits, they're demons, they're going to come. All of us will have to deal with doubt and unbelief until it's time for us to go home with the Lord or Jesus comes. But when we see doubt and, un and unbelief coming, this is where we must rise up and use the weapons of our warfare and cast them out in the name of Jesus and speak what the word of God says about whatever it may be. Very important. Can you say amen? Very, very important. And full assurance of faith means that you and I are fully persuaded that what God says, he's going to perform. It's when we're not fully persuaded that doubt and unbelief has an avenue to come in. It has a way to come in. And this is when people get tossed to and fro, tossed to and fro, tossed to and fro. Keep your finger here a moment. Turn over to the book of James chapter 1. And James tells us about doubt. Tells us very clearly about doubt and unbelief. In James chapter 1, praise God forever. And we're going to come back to Hebrews chapter 10. In James chapter 1, it tells us, it says in verse 5, If any of you lacks wisdom, underline wisdom there. What does that mean? That means you're in a situation, if you look at the subject here from verses 2, it says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, temptations, tests, and trials. You know, you don't rejoice because you have temptations, tests, and trials. Are you going through things? Hello? Are you all following what I'm saying? I gave an example before about this particular lady. I went to this particular church where I was saved. And they brought her in. And she was giving testimony. And they have to be kind of very careful when people give testimony. They must give a testimony that glorifies God. Can you say amen? And it must be based on the word of God. And she said, I just want to thank God today. I just had a car accident. God crashed my car. Broke my daughter's leg. Broke my arm. And I want to thank God for, for doing all of that. Well, that wasn't God who did that. Thank God for delivering her out of that particular situation. Not for the things that the devil has done. Can you say amen? And sometimes people get up there and say, Oh, I want to thank God for putting me in the hospital because I witnessed to somebody in the hospital. Well, I think it just came to your mind. I better do something while I'm in this particular hospital. No, we thank God for the things that are God. The Bible says in everything give thanks, not for everything. Amen. Hallelujah. So it says knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Notice what is being tested. Your faith in the word of God. The devil is trying to come and steal your faith and my faith in what God has said. That's one of his jobs. You'll see that. He comes to steal the word. He comes to steal our faith in the word. And when we, he steals our faith in the world, word, that's when we start doubting. That's when we start not believing. And that's when we start getting tossed to and fro like a wave in the sea and let's go down here in a minute <coughs> praise God it says in verse 5 if any of you lacks wisdom let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach God is not going to make fun of you or make you feel as nothing okay and notice it says 
and it will be given to him. In other words, if we ask for wisdom, we get wisdom. Now, what is wisdom? Wisdom is, Lord, I'm in this situation. How can I get out of this situation? Amen. That's the wisdom you need. What do I do to get out of this? Amen. What do I need to do in this particular situation? And God will tell you what you need to do. He'll give it to you. Can you say amen? amen. This is where you must have come. Lord, I'm in that debt. How do I get out of this debt? Well, this is where you listen to what God tells you to do. He will tell you. Lord, I got this family situation and they're attacking me. What should I do? He'll tell you what to do concerning them. Amen. And you'll have victory in that particular area. Amen. Notice it says here, it says, who gives to all liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him. That's the promise. He'll give it to you. Yes. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. For everyone, for everyone who asks receives. You will receive the answer. You will see, receive the instructions. The Bible lets us know God instructs us and teaches us in the way that we should go. Now you all still out there. Amen. Amen. Praise God for evermore. And then it says in verse 6, but let him ask in faith with no doubting. With no doubting. Full assurance of faith is there's no doubting. When there's not full assurance of faith, there's doubting. Will he or won't me? Will he or won't me? And one of the things the devil will try to do is put you in a, fry, fry, a time frame. When is it going to happen? How long is it going to be? You have to watch that. That's not your own mind speaking to you. That's the devil speaking to your mind so that you will believe that and that you will start saying that and thinking that and acting on that. When is it going to happen? When is it going to happen? When is it going to happen? Don't get in a time frame. Only time frame you get into is it's already happened because God said it. He calls those things that be not as though they were. Always remember that in Romans chapter 4, verse 17. He calls those things that be not as though they were. Abraham, you're the father of many nations. When he said that, Abraham had no children. But when he said it out of the mind of God, out of the eyes of God, and out of the mouth of God, it was already accomplished. Are you all hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? See, the devil is always trying to get us into the time. How long am I going to have to endure this pain? When will I get the manifestation of my healing? When will I get the manifestation of these finances? Boy, you all got quiet on me out there. I can hear a pin drop on the carpeting in here. How many hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? See, that's getting into a time frame. We're not governed by time. We're governed by the Word of God. Amen. What God says He's going to perform, He is going to perform it. Because we have full assurance of faith. Full assurance of faith. Okay? So, let us just go on verse 6. It says, But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He's a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. God says he's going to do it, have that full assurance of faith that he will perform it for you. Amen. Don't get into a time frame. Amen. When, Lord? How long, Lord? Are you still going to do it, Lord? No, it's already done. Can you say amen? Faith is now already accomplished. Now, go back to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 10. <coughs> Hallelujah. And then it tells us, draw near with a true, uh, with, excuse me, with true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. And the old King James says, much better, let us hold fast the confession of our faith 
What does it mean to hold fast the confession of your faith? It means to only let what God has said, despite what you see, despite what you feel, despite what you have been told opposite of what God says, hold on to what he says, declare that, declare that, declare that. Now there's three types of people you're gonna to have to deal with in this area, okay? First of all, understand confession of the word of God or declaration of the word of God. Number one, confession of the word of God or declaration of the word of God does not deny the circumstances or the problems. Right. Does not deny it. Right. Okay? Positive confession does. But that's not of the Lord. It's just saying things positive. Okay? Doesn't deny what the problem is. Right. Number two, it speaks the word of God to the problem and not speaking the problem all the time. See, we have been taught in the world to speak the problem. Well, there's what you call the truth or the principle of hearing. Whatever you hear the most, there's a tendency to believe it. And when you believe the wrong thing, and say the wrong thing, you get the wrong thing. You all still out there. Yes. Amen. Very, very important. So you don't deny what the problem is, but you speak what God has said. What God has said. Keep your finger here in Hebrews chapter 10. Go over to Mark chapter 11 a moment. Mark chapter 11. Praise God forevermore. I think we saw last week in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 2, that you are snared by the words of your mouth. In other words, the words that come out of our mouth put us in a trap. And we saw over in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20, 21 over there, that death and life are in the power of the tongue. Words have power. Words either build up or words tear down. Words can cause faith to rise, or words can call faith to diminish. That's why what we speak out of our mouth is so very important. The things that we believe that we speak, Jesus tells us this in Mark chapter 11, see this, praise God forevermore, very, very important. The things that we believe we say, these are the things we're going to have in life. Okay? Because our mouth produces fruit. Words out of our mouth produces fruit. Can either produce good fruit or bad fruit. It can produce victory or defeat. Sometimes you can hear people spark, speak defeat even before they attempt to do something. Hello, you all got quiet on me out here. You were hollering a minute ago. Hallelujah. Let's go to Mark chapter 11 a moment. Mark chapter 11. And as I said previously, many, many times that I've been here, when we come into the kingdom of God, we have to teach our mind to think the right thing. We have to teach our mouth to say the right thing. Very, very important. Mark chapter 11 Hallelujah. Verse 23, this is after Jesus cursed the fig tree and the fig tree dried up from the root. Jesus in verse 22 says, after the disciples said, look, the fig tree you curse is withered away. Wasn't a surprise to Jesus. Jesus had faith in God. Have faith in God. Original translation says have the God kind of faith. What does that mean? It means to operate the way God operates. How does God operate? Romans 4, 17, he calls those things that be not as though they were. Remember that. He calls those things that be not. We better see that. Turn over to Romans chapter 4, verse 17. Hallelujah. I was, about two weeks ago, I was riding with one of my students, and he was taking me down to Prayer Mountain. And he started giving me the testimony about Prayer Mountain. 
because I had said the Lord spoke to me and says that we're going to build a prayer mountain in Malaysia. I don't know where. It'll be an international prayer mountain. People will come from all the world. It will be called Prayer Mountain Miracle Center. It'll be a place for miracles to take place. Okay? So, I just told everybody, pray. And pray in tongues. Amen. Because when we pray in tongues, we pray the perfect prayer. Amen. If you're not praying in tongues, you are jipping yourself. <laughs> you're denying yourself. Okay? Because when we pray in tongues, we pray under the control of the Holy Spirit. He's giving us the perfect words to speak. So my students said, we were just told to pray in tongues by Pastor Nelson. He's one of our pastors of Lifeline Church in Kuala Selangor and also one of our training centers in PJ. He just told us to pray. So we asked the question, where is the land? And he said, I said, we don't know where the land is yet. <laughs> but God knows where the land is. He said, just pray. And so he said, we were praying and we continued to pray. We continued to pray for the prayer mountain. But people asked, where is the land? How many acres is it? How many this and that? So keep on praying. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. So my students said, you know what you did? You called those things that be not as though they were. You didn't know where the land was. God knew where the land was. And because God knew where the land was, God manifested the land. In my mind, the land was farther away. I had people even call me and say, well, we believe you. We got this land here in this particular village, etc., etc." Others would say, yeah, I think the land will be here. The land will be there. I said, well, I don't know where the land's going to be. But the Lord says, pray. This is what he's going to do. You all follow what I'm saying. That's like we pray for a church building here. We don't know where it's going to be. Just keep praying. And thank the Lord for the church building. Because he knows where it is. He knows the right time. Okay, he knows every detail that we don't know. This is where you put faith in praying in tongues, that when we pray in unknown tongue, the Spirit gives us the language to pray and we're speaking to God. That's what we hold on. That's what we believe. If you believe in God for a home, don't say, I don't know where it's going to be. Well, you can say that. But God says we have a home. Just believe it. Hold on to it. Continue to pray in tongues, whatever it might be. Can you say amen? amen? And so anyway, my student said, yeah, you call those things that be not as though they were. We ask you where the land is. You don't know. You, we ask you how many acres. You don't know. And then in a partner's meeting, I was sharing the vision again. And? When I shared the vision, afterwards this couple came up to me and said, my husband has some property his father left him. We haven't been there for 25 years. We don't even know where it is. But we'll drive down there and you can see the property if we can find the property. And then we drove down there with him. He couldn't find the property. So we had to go to the property office and someone had to get the details where the property was, where the property was, okay? And they said, we'll give you this land for the purpose of Prayer Mountain. Now that was 5.5 acres of land, okay? He found it and right across the road, there was this beautiful, beautiful piece of land with housing on it and things of that particular nature and we wondered who's this and somebody said this is a rich lawyer 
I said, well, maybe we can ask him when we have some kind of event that we can go over there and use his, some of his land for parking. Well, two years later, see, don't get into a time frame. Amen. Are you all still out there? Amen. Don't get into a time frame. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Know that God has said and God will do. And he will do it his way and he will do it in his time. And don't listen to the words of the world that says, oh, it's going to be so much higher and it's going to be far out of your reach. You'll never have enough money to, to buy that home or to do whatever. Boy, you all got quiet on me out there. And sometimes we have a tendency to hear what the world says and boom, we just believe that right away. Sometimes we hear what God says and oh, let me see. No, not supposed to be that way. See, whatever God says, we're supposed to grab that fast. So you all following what I'm saying? Amen. Well, praise God for evermore. Two years later, I got through preaching at the church. And then this couple and one of our friends came up and said, I want you to meet your neighbors. And I'm thinking about where we live. I said, I don't know any neighbors. <laughs> so I said, no, not where you live, but right across from your land. That was the rich lawyer. Okay, who had that property. And we met the wife. We met him, he was an unbeliever, met his children and everything, said hi. I told him, I said, we were wondering when we build our prayer mountain across the road, can we use your land sometime for parking? He said, yeah, anytime, just come on in, okay? That was a nice invitation. And about what, two years later, I get a call, there's a piece of land for sale right across the road from our prayer mountain. The brother said, you need to come down and look at it. I said, well, you look at it. He said, I've already seen it. You come down. So we had a meeting in this one particular town and I said, we'll stop off when we get there. So we stopped off and it was the land directly across from our land. This is where people need to see the hand of God, how God is doing everything. And that road used to be such a busy road. But they built a new highway out of there. Away from that road. And that road became our private road. Wow. Are you all hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is, is saying? It became our private road. We were thinking about... Well, if we have to buy this land, we have to build something where the people can walk over. See, there's a thinking of man and there's a thinking of God. Let God take care of every detail for you. It's remaining in faith, trusting what God says, and continuing to call those things that be not as though they were. Amen? So, as we started looking at the place, we drove up to the place first. And the sister, she had started going to the church that we go to. And she called my name, Pastor Vernon. I've been trying to invite you to my house for two years. I just didn't know how to do it. I said, well, I'm here today, divine appointment. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. So she started showing us the house and the property. And as she was showing us, the Lord said, Give them the asking price. Whatever they're asking, give it to them. So she told us what the asking price was. And as she told us what the asking price is, one of the brothers said, we can bargain and bring this down. I said, the Lord says, no, give them the asking price. See, when God tells you something, just do it. See, sometimes this, this, we lean on our own understanding. Can you say amen? God says, do not 
bargain. Give them what they're asking for. So I told her, we'll give you what, we're asking, what you're asking for. And she said, are you serious about this? Because we have a group from Taiwan, they want to pay cash, they want to pay over the amount we're asking for. We have a group from Korea, they want to do the same thing. We have other groups, they say they'll give us more than what we're asking for. I said, well, I said, we'll give you what you're asking for, but we have to raise funds. <laughs> Praise God forevermore, can't you say amen? Well, we went and put our deposit on the land, okay? And the rest is history. And the very next day, they wanted to fellowship with us. And the brother was showing me the land. And he said, you look, see up here on the top of the mountain? He said, that's 3.5 acres. I'll give this to you. God said, don't bargain. He said, you see across the road? This is one and a half acres. We'll give you this land too. So we got an additional made it a total of 19.5 acres of land. Hallelujah. All glory to the Lord. Can you say amen? But the thing that the Holy Spirit wants you to see too is Romans 4.17. Very important. It says here, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed. God said this, Abraham had no children. I don't even think he was a ham at that time. He was an Abram. <laughs> okay. And then we look at verse, hallelujah. It says, I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of him who believed. Out of the, when God said that, listen carefully, when God said it, out of the mind of God, out of the eyes of God, and out of the mouth of God, Abraham was the father of many nations. As Pastor John said today with the communion, agree with what Jesus has done. Can two walk together except they be agreed? These are some very powerful truths. A lot of times we don't get manifestations of things because we don't really agree with God. Hello. That's why we go through that checkpoint of making sure we are in agreement with God. That means we say the same thing God says. We think the same thing God says. Hello. We see the same thing God says and we act on what God says. Those four keys are very important in the area of an ag agreement with God. See, the devil always tries to get us to look here and see the opposite. God wants us to look here and believe what he says. Amen? And then it goes on and says here, in the presence of him whom we believe, God, who gives life to the dead. And here's your key here. Calls those things which do not exist as though they did. And the brother was saying, we were praying for things that you called not, that, you, that we did not see as though they did. You didn't know where the land was. You didn't know how much land it was. You didn't know what the land cost. But you said, pray for the land. That's right. Pray for the church building. Amen. You don't have to know where it is. God knows where it is. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Always remember that same thing. When Abram was to leave his country, leave his family's house to a land that God would show him. The Bible says over in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 that he went out not knowing where he was going. But his faith was in God because God knew where he was going. See, sometimes we hesitate doing things because we can't see it. But God sees it. God knows where it is. He just wants us to 
move out. Isaiah chapter 60. The Holy Ghost is bringing me over to this right now. You all still out here with me? Yes, Praise God forevermore. Isaiah chapter 60. Hallelujah. Verse 1. Isaiah 60. Verse 1. The first word is to arise. Underline that word arise. Rise means get up and do. Not sit. A lot of churches throughout the world, they sit. They hear. They want revelation every Sunday. And they don't do. Hello, you all sit out there. Arise. That's action. Faith without works is dead. What you believe, you must demonstrate. And it says, arise, shine, for your light has come. In other words, get up. We used to have a sister in our Gardena church. She only knew how to play one song. And we rejoiced because we didn't have any musicians. <laughs> and the little song she used to sing was called This Little Light of Mine. <laughs> and she got the name as This Little Light of Mine. I don't remember what her name was, but I remember we used to call it This Little Light of Mine. <laughs> she'd get up and she'd play that song. Maybe Emmett remembers that. This little, uh, he remembers that. This, and, and same thing with Ricardo. This little light of mine. That's what she was called. That's what we called her. This little light of mine. Because that was the only song she knew how to play. Was this little light of mine. And she sang that song. And we all sing that song with her. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, she sang that song. This little light of mine. God says, Arise. Shine. Woo. Hallelujah. Get up. Do it. You're all getting out there and going on the streets. You're letting your light shine. In your workplace, you're letting your light shine. Wherever you are, you're letting your light shine. Can you say amen? Notice it says, is risen upon you. In other words, it means it's already on you. Amen. And then it says, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you. That's the way things are in the world right now. Deep darkness is trying to cover the people. But for the believer, turn to the person to the right and left and say, that's me. Notice it says, his glory will be seen upon you. That's when you arise up. And let your light shine. Can you say amen? And then it says, The Gentiles should come to your light. And the kings to the brightness of your rising. Rise up. Let your light shine. Don't be bullied. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. That's why the world is, is, is looking for light. Yes. They're looking for a way out. And you have it. Amen. It's in you. Glory of the Lord is upon in you. Don't be discouraged. Hallelujah. Don't be disappointed. God's not going to disappoint you, or discourage you. Let that light shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Sammy, can you play that? Can you play that song? Well, then get on up here. I'm asking you. I'm not asking you to sit down. No, where's Christina? Let it shine. This little light of Okay, Deborah, sing it now. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Hit it, Sammy. Come on now. This little light of mine. This little light of mine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Man, hallelujah. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hit it one more 
time now. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Come on, one more time. This little light of mine, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord is good. You may be seated. Praise God. The Lord said, just turn to that and let our light shine. Can you say amen? Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Notice his glory should be seen upon you. Amen. The glory of God is upon you. Didn't you say that this morning? Didn't you say that this morning? You don't remember? <laughs> say that was, the Holy, that was the Holy Ghost on you. <laughs> God is good. Can you say amen? Okay, let's go back over here just one moment to Hebrews chapter 10. Calling those things to be not as though they were. Amen. Well, Mark chapter 11. Just wanted to let you see this real quick. Hallelujah. These are things that we've already gone over, but sometimes we go, we need to go over certain things because we haven't seen certain things. We've heard, but we haven't heard. As uh, my t shirt says, I hear you, but I'm not listening. <laughs> okay. Praise God forevermore. Mark chapter 11, verse 23. Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, or speaks to the mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things that he says. That's where it is. Believing the things you say. Believing the things you say. Say that. Believing the things I say. Believing the things I say. Notice what it says. It will be done for you. Whatever you say. Sometimes we say things we don't believe. Believing the things we say. This is where we declare what God says. Believing it. Believing it. How do I become fully assured? Number one, start thinking what God has said. Run it through your mind over and over and over again. And it'll drop from the head into the heart and when you ponder it in your heart it's there okay pondering means your mind is not saying anything but your heart is speaking that's your inner man that's that new creation in Christ Jesus faith comes from the heart doesn't come from the mind you run it over and over and over and over again what God says. If it's healing, you run those healing scriptures over and over and over again on the inside of you. And with your mouth, declare them. And declare, by Jesus' stripes, you're healed. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? When I was here doing the COVID time and I ended up in the hospital, first time I've ever been in the hospital, and the thing I was most concerned with, I told him as soon as I got in there, I said, it's not my time to die. So I'll still be here. Okay. And that's what I told him. Amen. It's not my time. Praise God. I'll know, I'll know my time when my time comes. Okay. But this is not my time to die. And I told him that. You know. And I just went to my heart. Not my head, but my heart. Because faith comes from the heart. And I just let things, I just over and over pondered things in my heart. Because that's where faith comes from. Can you say amen? And praise God for 
evermore. You get a new strength on the inside of you. And what comes out of your mouth is what's in your heart. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 12, turn over there a moment, Matthew chapter 12. You know, for years I would have seen people teach this, but they would never tell me how to do it. <laughs> you see, when you teach people things, you must tell them how to do it. Are you all following what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 12 gives us some keys here. Okay. Speak over the church. Speak the church. God adds to the church every day here. Don't speak small group or anything like that. Speak. God adds to the church every day. God draws sinners to him through this church. God's giving the church promises here. And the promises that he gives, you have to declare those. Well, you all got quiet on me out there. You have to declare that, not the opposite. Okay? Praise God forevermore. Look at Matthew chapter 12 a moment. Jesus tells us something here. He says in verse 34, Brood of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Notice out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's your spirit. Whatever is in a person's heart, his spirit, that's what's going to come out, whether you're a believer or unbeliever. Well, you all got quiet. That's when it comes out with power. Because notice when Jesus told us in Mark chapter 11, 23, he says, Whosoever says unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes the things he says will be done. He'll have whatever he says. Do you see that connection there? A lot of people's heart has a lot of doubt and unbelief. And when the pressure comes, the doubt and unbelief comes out. But if you've been in the word, you've pondered it in your heart, what comes out is what God says. By his stripes I'm healed. I thank you, family, Father, that all my family is saved and coming to the knowledge of the truth. They can act a fool as much as they want to, but they're saved and, and, and filled with the Holy Ghost serving God. You all still out there. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lifeline Pasadena is a blessing. Amen. A blessing. You guys are praying, going out on the streets. God says he's going to add to you. Amen. Get in agreement with him. Amen. Speak that. Amen. God says we're going to have a building. Amen. Believe that. Say that. Don't get discouraged. See, one of the things, my wife has been in 40 years of ministry. I guess I'm getting to 50. I quit down after 40. But praise God forevermore. I have with me, a lot of people have started. But a lot of people haven't finished. Some have fallen on the wayside. These are things I don't get an opportunity to, to really teach and preach. A whole lot of them started out with us during our particular time. And a whole lot of them have fallen to the wayside. Well, what God starts, it says Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. Can you say amen? See, you want to finish your course. You want to finish what God has called you to do. Not drop out. And discouragement, as long as you're in this world, discouragement is going to come because it is a demon. It is an evil spirit. It is a sign to people to give up and not go on. And the devil assigns people to us to get us off the, the path. He sends goofy people across our path. And sometimes we go with their goofiness. I'm just telling you facts. 
I'm speaking to you as a grandfather now and a father. You all hear what I'm saying? I remember when I was in the university, I would say, oh, I'm really going to study hard right now. And then a girl come along and I chase her. <laughs> and I Those are distractions. Are you all following what I'm saying? Amen. Just telling you these things. Praise God forevermore. Don't give up. If you feel discouraged, think discouraged, that's the devil. Amen. Cast him out yes. in Jesus' name. Realize that. Praise God. And you praise God. That brings the presence of God. And God strengthens you with his strength. And God's got a lot of good things for each and every one of you out here this morning. Now I have to tell you that this morning and keep watering that seed. Keep watering that seed with what the word says. Amen. Hallelujah. Did you get something out of that? Yes. Let's give Jesus all praise, honor, and glory. Hallelujah. Sister Marcia, come up here and receive the, the offering. Praise God.